Hello and welcome! After only 7 years of break, I am back with the next episode of my programming the Atari XL XE computers tutorial. This time we are going to look at sounds, which is something special and I hope the combination of my mic and the emulation output will work out in the recording as intended. Yeah, sound in the Atari is generated by the Pokey chip. The Pokey chip is a custom Atari chip. Uh, it stands, its name stands for potentiometer and keyboard and uh, these are two out of many functions that this integrated chip performs. Uh, the details that refer to sound generation are summarized on this nice page by Guri. And as you can read here, there are four voices. Each has a 7-bit pitch resolution, a 4-bit volume resolution. And um, it has special functions like combining two voices into 16-bit pitches to have a more accurate frequency resolution. And you can even have some kind of volume-only output for replaying samples. Besides that, the chip performs keyboard in uh, keyboard reading, uh, random number generation and also serial I.O. and can create interrupts. When it comes to generating sound output, then for each channel you have a frequency register and a control register. The frequency register can hold 8 bits of a divider value that divides the base frequency, which you can set, but typically it's 64 kilohertz by the value in the divider plus 1. So if you write 0 there, uh, the 64 kilohertz will be divided by 2, resulting in a round 32 kilohertz output. If you write a 121 there, you will have an output that is a square wave of about 260 hertz, which would mean a C4. As you can imagine, by dividing the base frequency, you get gaps in the frequency and there it will not be possible to match uh, specific notes on the chromatic scale in every case. Yeah, the control register has three bits controlling the distortion of this square wave and uh, it has one bit for the volume on your control that we will ignore for now and four bits for 16 different values of volume. Uh, besides that, all these channels are the same and then there is one control register that does overall control of these channels, which we will ignore for now. I will talk about it later. So, which information do we need here? Well, we need the information... What is Pokey? Pokey, and where is it located? Pokey is located at D200 and it has 16 registers out of which we are interested now in the nine related to the sound. Um, there are machines where there are to two pokies installed, then the second pokey is at D210. Uh, yeah, and there via interrupts it's even possible to detect whether or not there are one or two pokies. Um, all of the pokey registers that we are dealing with today are write-only registers. That means you can write values there, it will work, but you will not be able to read the values you have written back from these registers. Reading the same address has a different function, like giving you the keyboard code or the value of the pedal. So we don't will ignore that for now. For our exercise, we will just use one channel, so audio frequency 1 is at D200, audio control 1 is at D201, then we have the overall audio control which is at D28, and there is one more, it's the scan and keyboard control register which we will need to reset the chip to a defined state. Yeah, so it doesn't really generate output, but it helps us initializing the chip. <coughs> Sorry. So, we need our basic walking skeleton, so we need a main procedure. That we can start. And in that main procedure, we now first need to initialize the pocket chip. 
The poker chip is of course initialized by the reset routine of the operating system or in basic when you type in the end command. Uh, but uh, if you write your own program and this program is loaded from a disk or is another serial device like a tape, then Pokey has been used and you have to reset all the values in Pokey to make sure uh, you're starting from a well-defined state. Otherwise it might not just sound right uh, because the chip also does the serial I.O. and these registers are also used in serial communication. So we want to store zeros into the Pokey. And we do this for the first nine registers. And this is not enough. This will initialize the expected sound output, but the actual sound output is based on the internal state um, where there are counters based on these dividers and the control registers. And we have to reset that internal state by writing a three into this special control register. Um, and in fact that's the one thing that was missing in many commercial programs, even commercial programs in the early days that were released on cartridge and then when they were re-released on a disc or tape they didn't sound right because this reset was missing. So let's see what happens. <coughs> ah, as usual I forgot to set the origin. Let's lose the standard origin and we get the most uninteresting sound demo ever, which is completely silent. So, but why did I do this? I did this to show you where there are the audio controls in Altira. We have the audio monitor and the audio scope. They provide you with the current output of the four channels. So you see here the base frequency of the channel and the current values of their related counters and you see the output frequency that's currently generated because we have written a zero into the divider it is zero plus one and we divide uh, which is one uh, uh, yeah zero no it is one <laughs> more than this value so it's two so we are dividing uh, the 64 kilohertz base frequency by two and uh, that's of course a frequency we can't hear. Additionally, and that's important, the volume is set to zero, so we have a flat line here. You can effectively set such a high frequency and set the volume not to zero, then you won't hear it and it will be sounding okay in emulation, but if you run this on real hardware or via some uh, yeah, um, um, yeah, real boxes, real equipment, uh, these high frequencies can cause terrible distortion, so be assured, uh, be safe that you always set the volume to zero and not only the frequency if you want no output. Okay, but we do want output and I said we can generate a clear tone. Clear tone means a divider of 121, which is about C4. And then we have to select the distortion and the volume. The distortion, uh, that's three bits. So here we have three bit distortion, one bit volume control, which means that all these frequencies and so on are not used and only the volume is used for digital output. We won't do that, so we will not set this bit four. All values we will be setting are uh, even. And then we have the actual 4-bit volume. So, uh, a clear tone is A and a medium volume is 8. So we set here this as something that should be around 260 Hertz, which means it is a C4. And we see there is one channel and the other channels are not currently not generating output and this is the overall output. Okay, now we want to vary and what we typically vary is the frequency. So for simple sound effect it is sufficient that the frequency changes. So we want a counter 
and we want something that is like falling down. So we start with a low divider, which means a high frequency. We store that, we increment it, and we loop. And after the effect was played once, we want to repeat it overall. So we make a main loop here and we jump to the main loop. And that, of course, would be f much too fast. Yeah, so this is assembly, not, la not basic. Uh, so we need some delay. After writing the frequency, we need to delay for uh, a short uh, amount of time. And to this end, I create a delay routine that will wait for one frame, which on the PAL system is 1 50th of a second. And to do this, there is some support by the operating system, because there is a zero page location where the so-called real-time clock, real clock is located. And those are three bytes, most significant byte first, uh, that are counted up every frame. Yeah, so which means 60th of a second on NTSC and 50th of a second on PAL. And to delay for one frame, we would read the least significant value, check if it is still the same value, and as long as that's the case, we are in the same frame. And we wait. If you are familiar with Turbo Basic XL, that is the equivalent of the pause zero command. So let's see if that works. Well, I should call it wait. Excellent. And for those who remember it, it sounds exactly like bouncing Bob falling off a ladder. Okay, and now we can start playing around. Instead of using this clear tone of a square wave, you can use this more metallic distortion that sounds rather than like an engine. And that gives you the impression of invaders firing at you. And all the other values that are not A or C or 2, they give some kind of uh, white noise. Yeah, It's not actually right noise, but it's quite close and it comes at different yeah, uh, f yeah, combinations of a pulley counter. And they all sound a bit different. Let's take the most clear white noise and see what happens here. sounds like the invaders hit your base. And of course we can now start playing around by not counting up completely, but maybe just the small frequencies. Yeah, and then it's firing at something. Of course the real sound effect would not only modify um, the frequency, it would also decrease the volume, Yeah, start with a high volume and decrease to a low volume, uh, Yeah, but that's left as an exercise. Um, for this uh, episode we have reached what I wanted to show and in the next episode I will show you how to actually play music instead of doing simple sound effects. So see you in the next episode. <laughs>